So the zoo has always used some good building practices. We've been kind of using LEED as a guideline for many, many years here. However, we made a decision about three years ago to start uh, building with third-party certification in mind versus just doing the right thing, let's do the right thing and get the stamp of approval at the same time. If you're doing things for the right reason anyway, it's not costing you more to build it. So to take us on a journey, LEED is kind of difficult for animal habitats because there's not a bike rack for the animals you can put out there. We don't put low VLC carpet in for the animals. Things just don't really work with a building heavy type idea when we have more of a land use for animal habitats. This exhibit, it, you know, we keep progressing how we build animal habitats here at the zoo. Um, so I would say that this is a natural progression. Green roofs are, are something that we've been doing since 2008. Uh, this roof behind us is our sixth green roof that we have on our site. So a lot of the green roofs in the past have been what we call plug and pray. They put, they put a soilless medium out there, they put plugs in it, they hope it fills up. Well, in a harsh roof environment, that's really, that's, a lot, that's really tough. So having a system that's fully grown up, putting it in a rink makes a big difference. Um, it does help us with you know, some energy savings. It's hard to quantify it, but it does add insulation value. Uh, so, so it's good for keeping the, the roof cooler, and then in the winter time, it keeps heat in from being, being lost to the whole roof areas. So what, what I'm really jazzed about this exhibit is that it has all native plant materials. And also the, the live roof the, on top is all native plants. And that's the only native live roof that I know in this region. So to me, having all native plants, native live roof, and I think one, one, one little um, special pea in the whole mix is that Plaster Creek stewards, who do a lot of environmental work in creeks and, and native plantings, actually gather, they gather uh, seeds you know, from the, from the region they grow plants from that. So they actually gathered some seeds in the environment locally and grew plants for us for this exhibit. That's pretty cool. That's keeping it local. We decided to uh, still do this with zero CO2 emissions because we think that's the right thing to do. So this building is all, all done with, with zero CO2 emissions. So on our project, we have, you know, rain garden areas, we have leaching basins. Yeah, everybody does. That's an easy box to check, right? So the zoo sits on 103 acres. 38 of it is inside kind of this, this kind of uh, our own micro watershed. It's kind of the zoo itself with a, with a perimeter fence around. All that water is now being uh, put in one area, going through a, a nutrient separating box at the bottom of the hill to take out the weeby jeebies, take out the silt, all that kind of stuff. It's got a hydrocarbon boom on it, take out some of the you know, oils or, or, or you know, heavier type stuff in that before it enters our pond. So we're actually uh, able to, to have about 7 million gallons on hard surfaces per year that's going through our, our nutrient baffle box, being treated there, then going into our pond where it's being detained there for a while before it leaves our, our area and goes out to the the city storm into the Grand River. So we're really cleaning up what we're producing here. We wanna make sure that the, the, the exhibit is also accessible for the animals and for people. So there, there's a, a, actually a little nook area where uh, uh, so chairs on wheels can nudge a little closer to the exhibit, right? Doesn't take a lot of work to do that kind of stuff. It has different elevations in the exhibit, different substrates in there and different uh, challenges for the, for the animals. Because again, we want, uh, animal welfare is important to us just like it is people welfare. It has a, a pop-up bubble in the middle of it so that kids can clamber inside, pop up in the, in the exhibit, feel like they're inside it. The meerkats can come over to them, they can interact with them, they can really, really get a good engagement for that critter. And hopefully that engagement inspires them to make different decisions in their life for the future for it comes to the environment. So you can kind of mirror those things together, makes for a positive experience for everyone.